Calculating Fourier series coefficients. So it turns out we can use the Fourier series to calculate Fourier series coefficients and not have to do numerical integrations or anything more complicated. In fact, it's very easy. So let's remember our definitions of Fourier series. So we have a sampled signal. The Fourier transform becomes discrete and really reduces to a Fourier series. So the first one we typically learn in school is the standard Fourier series where we're expanding a function into sines and cosines. And we have these A coefficients multiplying cosines and B coefficients multiplying sines. And we also have this DC component sitting out here. And here's how we'll calculate the A and B coefficients. Later on at some point, we also learn that there's a complex Fourier series. And it involves these complex exponentials and we get a similar looking integral for calculating these Fourier series coefficients. So it turns out we don't have to calculate those integrals numerically. We can just use the FFT and it's very fast and simple. Let's first look at the one dimensional standard Fourier series. And so just for convenience, I've copied the equations over here on the right. So in MATLAB, we will first calculate the FFT of a function, divide by the number of samples and that gives us true Fourier coefficients in this array F. Now we didn't call FFT shift. So the lower order frequency terms are off to the far sides of that array F. Well, the very first one in F is that A naught term. Remember that's that sort of DC term sitting out there. M is the number of terms that we're interested in extracting for our Fourier series. So what we'll do is we'll take terms two to M and why are we skipping one? Because that was the, the DC component, the average value of F. So two up to some M, depending how many terms we want to retain. And if we look at the real part of that, multiply by negative two, we get the AN coefficient. So we'll have an array of numbers. Almost the exact same equation, but we're taking the imaginary part of F and those are our B coefficients. So it's that easy and we'll have the A naught, the A Ns and the B N coefficients for our Fourier series. I will add, in order to get accurate Fourier series coefficients, you will need a lot of points in your original function F. Let's look at the complex Fourier series. So here, we still do the FFT, we're dividing by the number of samples, but we're also calling the FFT shift that's going to center our zero order Fourier coefficient in the middle of that array. So then what is the array index of that? This is M naught. So this will be the array index into F of where that DC component is. And now when we extract our CN coefficients, which is the coefficients for our complex Fourier series, we center where we're extracting those numbers about M naught. And so in this case, we'll have two M plus one terms in our Fourier series. So that's very easy to get the complex Fourier series coefficients. And that's it.